This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're a person. Uh, today, I did some organization. <laughs> Catch me at the dollar store buying 40 toolboxes for a single dollar. Oh, yeah. I got them in and they're on a shelf on my wall. Honestly, I feel like the examples oh, nice. you give are usually pretty bullshit, but this is actually a this good one. This is a good one. This was like really strong. Like you took <laughs> steps, you made progress. Yeah. I don't yeah. necessarily think you as of somebody who like is always crazy organized. Uh, I'm not even close. Oh, by the have way. you seen his premiere files? Thank you. No, no. Digitally is different than physically. I would say I have a digital organization <laughs> skill today, by the way. I downloaded this app and I fucking crunched through all my emails. Emails, getting to inbox zero. You talking to me, Willis? So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, this is a new thing that I've been doing where essentially I want an organizational system, but I don't want it to be like too like uh, Pinterest because that kind of irks me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy these fucking toolboxes from the dollar store, yeah. and then I'm gonna put "Hello, my name is" name tag stickers yeah. on them for the lab. And then I'm kind of making little kits. Each is like a little yeah, thing. It's great. And put it in, I, I made a shelf and I put it on the wall. I no, really yeah. genuinely think this is a, perf a an example of being perfect as opposed to like wearing blue socks or whatever shit you normally say. How dare you? <laughs> wearing blue socks is the, the pinnacle of the Miles Nation, by the way. I mean, I think a frozen bagel actually Thank you. is something that you forget about, but you should not be forgetting. Every time you get bagel, put it in the freezer. Will sucks, no, I just rock. Eat the Will bagel. sucks. <laughs> No, I, I mean, my advice is, um, you know, it's controversial. I'm a, I'm, I'm a risk taker. I'm an edge lord. Yes. Um, people are not expecting <laughs> for me to sort of fucking bounce my ideas and my IQ off of their little tiny peanuts. Uh, I'm sitting that was here so sexual. <laughs> I didn't mean I it. I just to heard be. little tiny peanuts and I was like, yeah. is that I, I, I meant like a peanut sized brain. brain. No, I get like that. an elephant. Uh, but what I heard was was not that. Because an elephant has a size of brain that's the size of a peanut. Or is are they afraid of peanuts? They eat peanuts. <laughs> they eat <laughs> <laughs> If you're coming to this podcast for facts about elephants, you are not in the right place. <laughs> you are in the comments space. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm sitting here with the Reggae Ball crew. Chat. Ow. Holy shit, we've never fumbled it so hard. <laughs> By the way, in I the forgot the plan. I forgot the plan. In the cold over there discussing, before we even started rolling there discussing, Randy says, what if I say ch and you say ow? Okay, hold which on. Which I try knew again. was going to be bad. We got to do it one more time. I I'm, I'm ready this time. I was not ready before. I had before. my doubts coming into this. Okay, so just set us up again. I feel like we're going to nail it this time. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> That's a little better. It's, I guess it's it's like a better bad shit. <laughs> like a better bad thing. But honestly, the effort is rewarded. Thank you. But um, God, we have so much on the docket today. We it's, really do. Honestly, oh it's phenomenal here. Will has returned from his valiant trip. That's right. To the motherland of Chow. <laughs> You took the bit really far. And Will, look at me. I missed you. <gasps> oh, that's nice. That was really nice. Okay, well, first too. of all, I want to say it would have been tender except Rainy demanded that he. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. I wanted I you missed to you. know <laughs> in my eyes that I was being sincere and not yeah. throw it. It wasn't a throwaway. I missed Will as well. Yeah, I, I missed you guys, but I will say going on a three week European vacation, yeah. pretty cool. Pretty cool. If you're thinking mm. about going to Europe, mm -hmm. I recommend it. Yeah. And where did you go? You went to Italy? I went to France and Italy. Um, it was for my parents' 35th wedding anniversary, 35 years of marriage. Yeah, uh, let's and go. So my mom booked the international travel. Otherwise, I don't know that I would have been able to afford to go. Sure. Um, and then we did nine days in a small village in France, staying in a medieval house that has been updated to modern conveniences. So the walls are very crumbly and medieval-y, but like, mm. it has like plugs and stuff. It has plugs um, and has outlets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can charge your Switch. Yeah. Oh, I did bring my Switch, <laughs> but I only played it on the plane because I was like, I got to fucking see the country. Yeah. You know? Did you have, oh my God, did you have a backhead when you were there? <laughs> did I have a, a, a backhead? A baguette. A oh, baguette. Oh, oh my God, of course. 
We're yeah. the Baguette Sisters. I, I saw <laughs> That's right. The Baguette Sisters. <laughs> That's right. I saw someone call us like something. It was like that, but wrong in the comments. And I thought I was going to remember it for the show, and then I don't. The um, Bread Cousins. Yeah. Bread cousins. <laughs> I, I mean, did you learn any words that we could incorporate into the show? Well, I yeah. learned that you don't say bonjour. <laughs> I learned that you say bonjour. 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 Okay. Yeah, you don't bonjour. say the R. Bonjour. 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 And uh, Bonjour, you, and you say merci, merci beaucoup merci to say beaucoup. thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Um, but no, I studied no French. We simply have to do a live show in France. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the French. Their country respects pastries. They respect ham. Um, so um, <laughs> there's the full quote. <laughs> Wow, that's so cool, Will. And I'm glad that you sort of went to the city of Chow. Yeah. And you learned. And that's why, hence why uh, we're drinking a little bit of vino here. A little here vino verde. Because it's, it's Chow vino after dark. Vino is definitely Spanish. Well, be- <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to say it in Italian, I, I forget yeah. what it is. Vin, maybe? People may not know that this is Chow after dark. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's a Monday, obviously. It's Monday night. <laughs> I loved that. Will, I loved that energy that you brought. I also liked it, Will. Uh, you were it a was startled. startling. It was startling. Well, you talking to me, Willis? I thought that was really good, Will. And <laughs> I'm wondering if we could just do another take so we have it clean. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Hold <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, on, what did I say? It's Monday night! So, yeah. Well, basically... <laughs> It is Monday night, so um, we all worked today, hence mm-hmm. why we're recording at 6.30. Correct. So we're not stealing from the company. Correct. <laughs> uh, not, of course. We're not time thieves. I would never be a time thief. I would never. Well, uh, we've got to get to the phone lines. Because people really are excited. fucking calling, and at this point they called a million and a half years ago, because mm-hmm. we were gabbing before the show, Yep. Mm-hmm. and then we are gabbing during the show. As it should be. Um, as it certainly should be. But um, I think it's important for everyone to know out there, if you like the show, you can subscribe it on whatever platform you're listening to it so you cannot miss an episode and you can get that thang as it be swanging. And if you love the show, you can consider joining us on Patreon where we have extended versions of every single episode, including this one, as well as a saucy little Friday show where I get wild and wacky and weird. I call back people from the show to get their updates and I also do wild little thematic episodes that are fun. Huge for everybody. Very huge. Most recently, I did the weekend boys group logistics meeting where a bunch of my college boys and I went to a cabin and we dealt with the logistics in the studio. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking, but it was actually thrilling. Oh, yeah. No, I saw Eric's text about this and I I, I got yeah. I got a freaking subscribe. So it you were good. in a cabin. You weren't camping. No, it was like, ca- it was when glamping. I say camping, it was not even glamping. Honestly, we were just that sounds like a, a really fun premise to me. <laughs> it I, was good. Yeah, because you was, guys are all very funny and love to do bits and yep. nothing's more fun than doing bits about boring logistics. And we went through the whole itinerary. <laughs> it was really, honestly, really good. So if you want to listen to that, head on over to the Patreon. But until then, we have got some callers that are getting ready to stank. Ooh. Hi, Miles. So I just went on a girl's trip a little recently, just as of like two weeks ago. And there was a little drum that happened <gasps> on the trip. I'm not yes. one to get involved in the girl drum, but I am. it turns out I was the center of the drama. I was <gasps> the problem. Um, so if you could just wow. give me a call back whenever you get a chance, that would be great. Also, if you do call me back, I have kind of a part two to this problem, but it involves rainy. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Well, we obviously have to call. I mean, we this obviously, is obviously are going to I know why this one made it through. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I wonder if she has a mutual with me. Oh, my gosh. Well, because I was thinking, first of all, girls trip drama. There's nothing the Wrecking Ball girl loves <laughs> You're absolutely as we, right. As we sit here with our little wine glasses. <laughs> Honestly, the wine's pretty good. Yeah. It's turning. <laughs> Let's give this person a call back so we can get those hot deets. There we go. Hello, Hello. you called perfect person, and I'm here to call you back. I'm here with the Wrecking Ball crew. Ciao! Okay, we're we're getting worse. (laughs) Oh my gosh, you guys could have not called on a more perfect day. I've had the wildest day. Oh Oh my god, fantastic! Tell me all about the girls' trip drama because if the Wrecking Ball crew loves one thing, it's drama. Cheers! Cheers! (laughs) 
<laughs> drama. So true. Okay. I need to unpack the story and set the scene a little mm. bit because there is, there's quite a lot to talk about here. There's a lot that of key it. players. So that let's scene. start about two years ago. Um, oh, yeah. I got married. Oh, my God. Okay. 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 You got married. Shout out to Matt. Yes. And so, <laughs> yes. So I had um, some of my college girlfriends were my roommates. And there was one girl in particular. Can we give her a name? Her name is going to be Beluga. <laughs> Beluga. I love it. This is very fitting for her. And uh, you'll figure out why in a sec. So, <laughs> oh, no. Beluga, uh, 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 Beluga was not a bridesmaid in the wedding because her and I, like, we were, you know, in the same friend group. She lived with some of my bridesmaids. But personally, her and I just were not, we were not close friends, right? Fast forward to recently, I go on a girl's trip with the same girls that I go on like a college little fun reunion week every single year. Okay. And Beluga never comes on this trip. Well, because she just does her own thing and whatever. We're, we were college friends, not friends anymore. Exactly why she wasn't in my wedding. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> she decides to have her sister, who is younger than us, Text four girls on the trip. There's six of us total. She chooses four to text and says, Hey, Beluga is really upset that she's not on the trip. Oh. So Beluga did, in fact, just get married as well. Mm. And she asked about 12 million people that we went to college with to be her bridesmaids. And of course, I wasn't invited, which is fine. But so now it has like the plot has thickened because she has just gotten married. Does that make sense? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. So she just got married. You weren't invited to the wedding to be. Were you at the wedding or just not a bridesmaid? No, I was just not a bridesmaid. But there was also some other things that came up. So I did not go to the wedding. Oh, but okay. there has. I yes. So there has been no bad blood, though. I mean, and yeah. it was for legitimate reasons. I truly could make it. <laughs> So the four girls decide, okay, we're going to go outside. We're going to call Beluga and we're going to talk to her, you know, and just work things out. I'm like, okay, that's fine. No worries. Whatever. Nothing that's helping the vibe more than a big group phone call <laughs> in the middle of a girl's trip. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is just, just does not make sense. And it's the day before we leave too. So it's uh, like, it just ruins the vibe. Things are weird. So they're like, yeah, it'll just take five minutes. We'll be back in. I'm like, okay, cool. They are outside for 30 minutes. And I'm oh, like, okay, no. something's going on. I, I can tell that like, you know, they keep putting her on mute and they're talking, you know, they're just like talking in between. Some girls are throwing up their hands. One girl's not saying anything at all. I can just tell like the conversation is not going well. How are you watching this? So, by the way? Are you, in <laughs> are you inside like uh, nose pressed or, to the glass? Or did you find a spot in like the bushes? Yeah. Okay, so I am embarrassed because my nose was, in fact, pressing the glass. <laughs> I'd be doing the same thing. So they're outside for a long time. They come back in, and it's me and the one other girl who was left out of the group chat, but she's also, you know, on the trip with us. We're sitting in there, and I'm like, hey, how did it go? Kind of laughing, like, obviously, clearly it did not go well. <laughs> and they're like, she's upset that she wasn't in your wedding. What? And I was like... <sighs> My wedding from two years ago? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> so she's yeah. holding on to that in a serious, crazy way. Yeah, I also don't know if you can be upset for not being in someone's wedding. Yeah, there's so many times where it's like, my, even friends that I, I that I love, it's like, yeah, they had a wedding party and I love being in the ones I've been in and yeah. the ones I'm not in, whatever. Like you were invited, like you invited her to the wedding. She well, just wasn't in the party, right? I, yeah, right. that's interesting. I mean, but like, here's what I'll say. If, how close were you? Because if I wasn't in a close friend's yeah. wedding party, I would be tiffed. Maybe a little bit. Most of the time it makes sense though. It's like right. mostly people you've drifted apart from or whatever. Right. Well, it's like, you know what it is? It's like a little puzzle piece scenario. If you're looking at the rest of the groomsmen and I'm like, wait, how all these people, but not me, I would right. probably be tiffed. But this person doesn't seem like they were close with you at all. Yeah, did you have a friend falling out at some point in college? No, no, uh. not at all. We were just, it was one of those things where we were in the same bigger circle, mm -hmm. but we like one-on-one, -on -one, I don't think we ever hung out one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. We never had like a deep conversation. We would go on spring break trips together. She would never really come on the trip to like make those core memories with us. She wasn't beer bonging in Cabo <laughs> with the girlies. <laughs> yeah. I okay, know. okay, sure. So I'm just not sure why, where these feelings are coming from. And basically the conversation ended. Well, I think Beluga might call you 
sometime within the next two weeks. And it's been a little less than two weeks since this has happened. So I'm just like waiting on the edge of my seat for me to get a call from Beluga. And what I'm really wondering is how in the world do I handle that conversation? This is a great problem. And I know, I think I have my diagnosis as a professional doctor. But I am, <laughs> but I am curious to hear how Rainy is involved. Oh my gosh, I'm oh, yeah. dying to know. Okay, so Rainy, is not, I'll be honest, is not included in this problem. But my Rainy issue came immediately following this issue. Okay, seems I'm like a ready. clickbait. So it's, <laughs> so it's not. I promise it's not. But I just had two big issues, so I had to throw them both in there. Yeah. And it's anyway, so if I could get an answer to this first, then <laughs> chronologically the rainy thing okay. be nice. I'll barter with you. I'll answer your problem if My, you tell me how Miles, rainy is. This, this is my show now. I'm taking wow, over. You've co opted the show. Well, first of all, um I think this is a situation where um Beluga is going through something mm-hmm. that has nothing to do with you whatsoever. Yeah. And this feels like Beluga's okay. having a bad fucking week or yeah. month or year, and she's choosing this opportunity to put it all on you, the scapegoat, for not being in your wedding. But it sounds like, it's like, if I had a friend that was sort of a fringe friend, and I yeah. see everyone hanging out, and then I'm like, I wasn't at her wedding, and then, oh, there's a group trap, and it's just like, well, actually, like, really, like, she's been the antagonist the whole time. Mm-hmm. She's the freaking, yeah. you know, Snow White's m- mistress. What's her, what is it? The evil witch? Snow White is not a lesbian. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Snow White's evil. <laughs> she has the apple. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. We'll take it away. The, the witch. <laughs> there we go, the witch. So I think that she thinks that you're Snow White's witch. And uh, for some reason, she's okay. using this opportunity to be like, it's actually all your fault. But I honestly think it has nothing to do with you. So what I'm going to say is that it doesn't hurt you to be a little sweetie pants to someone that's having a nervous breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't disagree. And I also okay. think, I don't think you have to be like defensive in this situation because yeah. it doesn't sound like you've really crossed any lines. No. It sounds like like you, what you explained is a normal process. People are really close in college and there's larger groups and then there are people who you don't see as much and it depends on where you all end up living and even yeah. if you live in the same place, it still happens. Like, and it can be really nice to like maintain those connections, but there's no reason that you, her not being a bridesmaid is something that she couldn't just accept. It sounds like she definitely carried a grudge from that, but then why is it coming up now? I think Miles is right. I think mm-hmm. she's going through a bad time and is like fixated on this trip, which she was ultimately invited to and just yeah. couldn't yeah. come. Like, like she's fixated on the trip and you as the scapegoat for a, a whole host of other problems. You talking to me, Willis? So, yeah, I mean, I'm agreeing with that. Rainy hit it. I have big advice Uh-oh. for everybody. Okay. This is what so you think, oh, somebody's mad at me. Somebody, it was a weird interaction. Do they hate me? You got to turn that on its head. They're in love with you. Because what I'm getting from this okay. is she's thinking about you constantly. And you're not thinking oh. about her at all. So I'm thinking she probably has a right. crush on you. No. Rainy, this is, I'm going to say, a rare Rainy L. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, you don't want to act on it, is what I'll say. You don't want to act on it ever. But just in your Leave mind, your husband, oh, that was pursue this, weird. pursue Beluga. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, people do say the opposite of love is in hate. It's indifference, right? Like if yeah. she if she didn't care about you in some way, she wouldn't have this sort of anger towards you. Yeah, so she was, seems really caught up on you. Right. If she was actually yeah. mad about this, she would have brought it up two years ago. Yeah, yeah. like like it, that's how responsible people yeah. handle it. And look, there are people out there who just hold on to grudges and just fucking get angry about it. But it, it really does have to do with the other circumstances in their life. And I think yeah. it's unlikely mm-hmm. that she recently married is in love with you. Now here's yeah, but well, I love where Randy's coming from though. <laughs> Um, you know what I'll say? Uh, you know, I'm curious what you guys think about this. I'm sort of like if you give a mouse a cookie, <gasps> you can kind of lie to someone who's sad, where it doesn't necessarily betray anything or be a problem for you to be like, look, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. I'm sorry that you feel that way. You know, hey, look, I didn't think we were that close, but I guess we are, and I do want to pursue this friend. Just talk, kind of fart out a conversation. Yeah. I don't think there's any downside to lying to this person and being like, Look, I'm really sorry. I get where you're coming from. Yada, yada, yada. I have well, another big thing. Uh, Rainy I- has a second piece of weird advice. Redemption <laughs> round. Here we go. Okay, Rainy, let's get it ready. <laughs> Woo! This is actually a piece of advice from my funky church that I went to during the pandemic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of balls. <laughs> 
Anger is a cry <laughs> for love. So if she's angry with you, then you lead with love. Mm -hmm. You make it, you heal it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even mm -hmm. really matter if, you know, yeah, like I think like Miles saying, you can be like really front foot forward, caring, healing, energy. Agreed. Yeah. I don't necessarily know that you have to pledge to like pursue this friendship necessarily yeah. either. Like I, I think, you, Miles, you're right. You can tell some white lies, but I wouldn't say anything you're not willing to back up. Like, Let's hang out. Let's get Boba and then fucking ghost mm -hmm. the gal. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> I, I think you could say like you could make plans to see her, but I wouldn't I wouldn't over pledge on oh yeah let's be best friends. No, no, no you but you'd be like to. oh I totally well, understand. And, and the thing is too is like we live in completely different states now, so like that's not even an issue. Yeah, it's like, never gonna happen. Our our lives are so yeah. far removed that it's like this. I was just so blindsided because I truly because and and the girls were saying they're like yeah maybe a chat would be good like you could air some stuff out with her and I was like. I, I truly have nothing to say and that's not me being rude. That's just like the truth. Yeah. I just, yeah. And you could even say, you could say this in the conversation. Like yeah. I, I don't have a problem with you. Like it, this all happened based on just like friends drifting apart. And I'm sorry yeah. if that hurt your feelings. Unfortunately, like, that's um, kind of the problem. It's the madman thing. I don't think yeah. about you at all. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, she's like, oh my gosh, we have this beef. And you're like, I fucking have not thought about you. Like, you're not on my mind. I thought right. they were talking about fucking some TV show out there for 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. Did, right. that, you, like you said, you had no right, idea right. that this was this whole thing was about you. So, yeah, I, th I think if you lead with love, like Granny said, and maybe give her an opportunity <laughs> to kiss you through the phone, you know, see what happens. Kiss me through the phone. <laughs> And now I have the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. I just really need to know about do you guys have any more advice before we no, get to no, rainy party? Case closed. Stage. Okay. Left. Case closed. Case closed. Okay, we are moving on. Okay. So immediately following this trip, which was I'm from Tennessee, by the way. But immediately following this trip, which was in Arizona, um, I decided to take a little trip on over to your all's neck of the woods in California. <gasps> To visit Ooh, my sister, who just recently moved out there. Whoa. And it's funny that in this conversation, oh, no. we're talking about having weird interactions with people and you thinking they hate you because that was my interaction <laughs> with Rainy <laughs> just a few days ago. Wow. A few days ago? Rainy is canceled. Rainy is out of here. <laughs> oh, no. Rainy, no. Honestly, Rainy, and I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you at all. I'm more <laughs> mad at myself because I acted like such a fool. And you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. So let me, again, let me set the scene. So <laughs> we're, we're driving, we're, we're driving the streets, me and my sister. And we're, she's showing me around, you know, I hadn't been out there in a while. Well, she was like, oh my gosh, I've got to answer this email. I need to pull over on the side of the road. I was like, okay, cool. We find a little parallel spot. We drive over and in the meantime, it's so funny because I was just talking about this podcast to my sister. I was like, you've got to listen to it. It's so funny. Like, they come up with the funniest <laughs> advice. But it's, like, also really good. And she was like, oh, no way. Who's on it? So I was like, oh, Miles. And I was like, oh, That and girl right there. And then Rainy <laughs> fucking takes a baseball bat to your car. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, that would have been much more like. That, that would have been much better. But. <laughs> And this is really embarrassing for me to say, oh and I'm God. regretting it now. But I was like, oh, there's this girl that comes on the show. Her name is Rainy. I think she's so funny. Like, Thank whatever. You. She's so funny. <laughs> and I was like, if I saw, because, like, I'm not one to, like, go out to L.A. and celebrity hunt, but I know that Rainy is in her influencer era. <laughs> so I was like, if I saw... If I saw Rainy out in the wild, like, she would probably say hey to me. You know, she's trying to be an influencer girl. So, I kid you not, we are literally in a parallel spot. And I see a car, like, coming out of a parking lot somewhere in front of us, waiting on the traffic to pull out in the road. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that is Rainy. That is literally Rainy in front of our car. And I'm like, out of all places, California is a big state. Like, out of all the places we could be, Rainy is in front of us. And so... My sister also does not have automatic windows in her car. She has like the roll down windows. So I don't know why, but my first thought when I see Rainy's face is to roll down the manual windows in my sister's car, stick my head out the window and yell, go <laughs> to Rainy. Wow. And where, Rainy, where were we? Where were we? Yeah. Give us some geography. So, well, so I was in Burbank. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Rainy comes pulling out. And I'm like, Cal, sticking my head out the window. And Rainy, you like looked over, like you heard something and you were just like ghastly. Like you just did, had no idea what was going on. We made eye contact and then you just drove away. Like, and I was like, oh my God, she hates me. She doesn't Rainy even know me. Rainy Gaslight's a fan. <laughs> Rainy Gaslight's a fan is the title of the episode. <laughs> By the way, I we were all in bated breath for Rainy being canceled. And I know it's a big, exciting moment, but what happened was that Rainy pulled it onto the street. <laughs> yep. And she Rainy didn't, didn't, hear you. You. didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I guarantee you, Rainy would have stopped and said hi. Well, by yeah. the way, Rainey would have said ciao. Uh, I, yeah. Oh, I would have been like, ciao. <laughs> I would have, if I've, I've seen, I've only, by the way, only gotten recognized twice. Yeah. Both times. So excited. I, <laughs> and I hate to say this. I, because it is weird that I made eye contact. I probably thought you were yelling at me because I probably thought that you're mad at me. For driving poorly. <laughs> yeah. Because I do get that more frequently than people yelling chow at me. Rainy's trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Rainy thought that you were a mad bystander for her pulling onto the wrong street. And there's a chance that I was like, wait, why is oh. why are they yelling why what did I just do? Did I miss something? You know, did I just run over someone? But yeah. Um, I would have. I'm. I, I wish I had said ciao. That is so funny that you ran into Rainy and you had such a negative experience. <laughs> God, that's funny. <laughs> I will say I've been recognized like three or four times, maybe, yeah. and it's always fun and weird. And uh, but like, I, I will say mm. I, this is this is carte blanche permission to any listeners of Perfect Person out there. If you scream ciao at me, I'm looking at you and I'm Literally, figuring it out. By the way, yeah. say ciao to me any time of any day or time. week. I oh, don't yeah, care yeah. what I'm doing. It's the code you can word. Scream it, and I will be like. Hopefully, I will hear you. <laughs> I was shirtless. I was shirtless in Big Bear, and someone did not say "ciao," but they went "miles," and I was like, "Do I know this person?" And they were just like, "Hey, I, I watched the thing." <laughs> like, that's really nice of you. Very sweet. Yeah. Like, no, it's um. None yeah. of us have any real like serious cloud. I guess Miles has more than we do, but I like, absolutely don't. The, by the way, like, <laughs> but like, it's a, it, it. That's the thing. Like anyone who is like, we're not at the level of fame where it's at all annoying because I do not think of myself as a famous person. Every time yeah. I recognize, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. I I couldn't be more accessible. Yes. You oh can literally, call, you can call me on the phone. <laughs> However literally. inaccessible you think I am, you can call me on the horn. So I don't think you should feel bad. I don't think Rainy should feel bad. I think ultimately what happened yeah. is that cars are hard to hear in and maybe you should have yelled chow again. Yeah. You know? I was also probably listening to Young Gray. By the way, if, if chow doesn't work, you got to follow it up with a bonjour. 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 Okay. Um, but um, wow, what a wild thrill ride. Um, and uh, I'm so sorry you had that interaction. <laughs> um, thank you for calling in. And um, I'm going to let you go, but you're the best. Uh, make sure you're a sweetie pants to the friend of yours that's being weird. And chow yes, a million you, times. A million chow, 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 chow. Oh, my chow, chow. oh. That, just made, that just made my whole life. Rainy is not canceled anymore. Oh, chow. <gasps> okay. Chow. chow. All right. Okay, that was the best one by far. <laughs> yes, we, <laughs> really? You guys are upping your chow in a huge way. <laughs> That's big. And by the way, really, Rainy, your heart must have been racing that whole oh time. God. You're like, did I... <laughs> I thought it was going to be, I mean... Yeah, what was the? What did you think it was? I think you thought it was somebody you actually knew in real life or somebody knew somebody you knew oh, in real life. I yeah. 100% at the beginning of that, I thought she said, oh, by the way, I like had this whole friendship with some guy you used to date. Oh. So you, you thought that, yeah, it was going to be an ex-boyfriend situation. Yeah. Well, we've got <laughs> another little voicemail here with a problem about a beef. <gasps> Hi, Miles. So I'm calling because me and my ex-best friend were currently in a kerfuffle over the same guy. And she's a singer-songwriter, so now she's releasing a diss track about me. And I don't know Fuck if, yes. you know, maybe I should say something, maybe get some revenge, or maybe, am I am I the problem? Am I the asshole? Call me back, please. Thank you. Wow. We've got to get the diss track on the show. I mean, we have to play it on the show. Hello? Hello, you called Perfect Person because you've got a beef that's absolutely <laughs> sizzling. I'm here with the Wrecking Ball crew. Ciao! Oh, my God. <laughs> the Wrecking Ball crew? <laughs> Fucking hell, he nailed that that that, by the way. It's PP royalty, baby. <laughs> and the Baguette sisters, the, the bread cousins. Sisters, the, bread, the bread brothers. <laughs> um, Amazing. And yes, we're gonna they're need, all good. We're, we're going to need some more details. First of all, I just have to double check in because we don't want to lead a horse to water. But is the diss track already out or is it dropping soon? 
No. So actually, some background is that I should have learned my lesson the first time. This will actually be my second this track uh, to come out. No I am way. so jealous of you. That is so, my dream. No. So <laughs> we had like a little, like a smaller fight, like um, maybe a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. And she released one then too. But then we like became friends again. It was all fine. So this will be the second one and it comes out at the end of the month. Is it bad form for me to play the first diss We'd track like to on hear the show? <laughs> Probably not, right? It's we, fine. I think that's okay. She published it. She published it. Hey, this is Miles from the future editing the episode. And I wanted everyone to know that I did reach back out to the caller to confirm that it was okay that I leave the diss track in, even though we are going to be using a fake name for the artist. It was just too good not to include, so I made sure to get permission to post it. And that is the T. Okay, okay, okay. So it's called The Carpenter. The Carpenter? And what yeah, is... Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. And this is a diss track against you. Wow, it's long. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to be playing just a little bit of this. just so. I, and comments are turned off. Oh, that's going to be a point for you. Okay, here we go. Okay, great start. Cry me a river. Her voice is amazing. <laughs> Take your sorry body and get over it. Call me a stranger, cause I don't wanna be your friend. Oh, oh shit! I've got the gates locked, swallowed the key, keep the bones in your closet far away from me. Oh, you break shit. bitches' hearts, a too fucked up to act sorry. Holy shit. Wow. I hope you take all the blame for the walls that she's built. I hope <laughs> stop reaching out though I know that you well she's the carpenter tried to fix you. Oh, we are she, oh, I'm really sorry, but <laughs> whatever drama you have is worth it because this is such a fucking bop. This is a bop. This is Olivia Rodrigo who? Like, her voice is gorgeous. I, I don't know what this girl... This girl could have fucking murdered her entire family, but I heard the diss track is really good. <laughs> I want to play that on my car right now. I'm literally... I didn't want you to stop. I'm adding to Spotify when I get in my car. I'm really sorry to hear it, but let's hear... No, and that, no so I let her... Like, we, got, we became friends again, and she was like... I gotta keep this up. This is like that's my name. But she's like, that's this oh, is my most name, successful Rob. song. But yeah, no, it's. I mean, yes. it is good, and I think she has chops, and I'd like to represent her. <laughs> <laughs> but I am yeah. curious what the Heard new. So, fair. so what was the? What are the falling outs you guys keep? Yeah. I mean, it's this hot and this cold. It's, it's like, like Taylor Swift's exes. It, I mean, from the from the from the song you said, she said you break bitches' hearts. It was yeah. is this there is a romantic component to the fight? So or now is Will is unrelated? doing my thing. Yeah. Of, yeah. is she in love with you? Well, yeah. but that's, this is a more reasonable question. <laughs> Last one. Do you think she has a crush on you? I don't. I mean, like... <laughs> that was not the like, answer Rainy wanted. Well, <laughs> Rainy really wants that. Yeah, no, unfortunately. Okay. That would be, like, the ending to this. But no, so the first fight we got into was because um, I actually was having, like, romantic, like, relationship problems with a mutual friend of ours, like, someone I was dating and mm-hmm. she was friends with. And you've got bones in the closet so far away the- from her. Yeah. Which I'm interested in, I'm but that might be too deep for this podcast. I mean, what are the bones in your closet that she's trying to keep people away from? I don't know. So that's the thing is like, <laughs> you know, she's making music. So she's got to like. She's taking artistic she's license. Gotta, <laughs> yeah. But oh so, yeah. So the first song, it's in the past. So she was mad um, about something that you did to somebody else, essentially. Like not even about. Yeah. Her. And like that was right. And that was always my biggest problem with it. Cause it was like, it's not even drama that involved her you know what i mean yeah this is an ethical um conundrum for me because i'd really love to (laughs) plug this bitch's music (laughs) (laughs) i'm assuming that whatever you you know what happened to you you, this mutual friend of yours it it, is just a normal dating thing and it wasn't like like oh you know you were screaming at her all the time yeah what happened what happened between you and the friend you know, we were young, we were still in high school. And I think I was just in a place where like, I was very on and off again about like how I was feeling about that person. And like, I admit it now, like I'm our, I'm good friends with that person again. Like it was just kind of like, you know, I was being immature about the whole thing, I think. But for some reason, like it really affected this mutual friend of ours. Like, you know, the girl who writes the music, like she was just very mm. upset about it all. 
Yeah, right. I mean, I feel like when you're an artist, I mean, I get this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure she was just like, oh, this is like what an emotional thing and like that'd be a good song and like maybe she was sort of emotionally affected by it, but then she really wanted it. She was like, oh, this fucking bops actually. Yeah. So the first diss track, I mean, I got to say it's great. It's good. Um, yeah. Now, what is the modern issue that you believe that she's going to be writing a track about? Back in like February-ish, um, I had admitted to having feelings for a friend that she actually introduced me to. Um, and so then like, you know, I told her how I was feeling. She was super supportive of it. But I found out later down the line that he had feelings for her. Mm, okay. And then like once I like he admitted that to me. And so then I, you know, felt the need to kind of like come clean about how I was feeling because I felt like that might be affecting how she was handling the situation with him. And then I found out that the second I told her I had feelings for this person, she realized that she also had feelings for him. The second that you said that she yeah. was like, oh, uh, me too. Yeah. Like she was <gasps> like, yeah. Like, cause we had a conversation about it after and she was like, yeah, like, you know, just hearing you talk about him made me realize that I was like jealous and I was upset about it. And so then the two of them started pursuing things. Oh Lord. And like, you know, <laughs> and like they hadn't even been like talking for like a week and they came to my Oscars party and they totally like, you know, I was running around consolidating them at, at my Oscars party. And it was like... Because they broke up? I didn't Wait, even know how... Was, Why were you consolidating? Well, because the girl kept being like, I don't think I like him. I think he's like ugly and like annoying. And I'd be like, then what are you doing? Like, it didn't make any sense. So she saw that there was a yummy meal being made. She decided to eat up. Mm. Then she gets full. Absolutely. Oh, I'm a little full and I don't want to eat the meal anymore, but that's sort of prohibiting you from having that yummy little snack. <laughs> yeah. And like, I'm, I'm being really good about it. Like, you know, I'm really, I'm distancing, distancing myself from the guy. Like I'm just kind of really trying to support her and what she's doing, but it's clear after like two weeks of them talking, but like, this is not going anywhere. How, like yeah. how she old clearly are, does not like this. How old are you? I'm 20, um, but they're older, actually. Um, they're like four years older, so they're 24-ish. And like, I cared enough about the two of them at this point to just be like, I want you guys to be happy. Like, gotcha. yeah. okay, if cool. that's with each other, but then that's cool, you right? Said two weeks so then, in, it's clear, like, yeah, she thinks he's ugly and annoying, <laughs> which <laughs> somehow your words convinced her. Like, that's yeah. that's just weird on its own. Like, we, we'll get to the end of the story, but like, it's something very odd to be like, I want that thing you want. Yeah. You know? And so the whole time, too, like, that I was still like that I was into him like she would always try to convince me like reasons why I shouldn't like him like no like you don't want to be with him like he gets depressed sometimes and it was like what does that mean like yeah, what yeah so what does everybody hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hate to you're, break gonna, it to yeah. you're gonna have trouble finding anybody yeah. to be around <laughs> yeah sometimes in life you gotta be sad so, I agree good t-shirt <laughs> clearly like things like wind down between them they're not going anywhere and he starts flirting with me and like I've been trying to lay low, but like, I still have feelings for the kid. It's only been like two months since that initial conversation at this point, you know? Yeah, right. So, you know, so we start kind of hanging out one-on-one -on -one, talking more and, you know, before anything goes anywhere, I immediately like tell her, I'm like, you know, right. I really want to respect your boundaries and like, he doesn't need to be around. I don't need to talk about him, but like, this is a thing that's going on, you know? And I just wanted to be honest with you about that. And she's supportive at first, but like over the course of a week, like each day, like she just kind of got less and less supportive of it until one day, like she texts me this long text while I'm at work. And she's basically like, you know, because you're with him now, like you're associated with him by proxy and like, I can't speak to you anymore. Oh, this person's a really, okay, so really like, troubled. Yeah. Like many musicians, this person yeah. is not in control of their feelings no. yeah. and like does not have emotional maturity because you clearly did the right thing by yeah. talking to her. And like, like you said, she doesn't even like him. What, what, why does he, there's this weird thing. Like, why do you have possession over somebody else? It, even if it's, I know people who are still weirdly possessive, like ex girlfriends from years past, and it's like yeah. that person is not dating you anymore. Get over it. Fucking yeah. move on. Yeah, I totally agree. Now I think it's a tricky era because I think that there is sort of a movement in the friendship space <laughs> where it's sort of like, oh, like that's my ex. Yeah, and I think that it's interesting. And like you, there's no one can ever date him. 
And I get that impulse when you're they younger. They did it for two weeks. Well, they no, didn't even date. They I, weren't official. Like, who gives a shit? I well, think that's it's a my young, thing. It's like, a does young, it count? Yeah, it's a young person's game, I think, to be like, um, oh, like I've claimed that person and now I want them. It's like, I, oh, you're playing with that toy. I kind of want to play with that toy. Yeah. But then when you get a little older, I think it's just yeah. like, oh, no, whatever. Everyone has a million exes yep. that at yeah. this point, like who's even keeping track? Um, it's also right. like, I think that it to me is indicative of when people have that sort of possession, it's that they actually are not experiencing closure because they are removing mm. too frantically through relationships to actually have them beginning, middle, end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like they're, this. she's like, oh, well, like, yeah, actually, I like him now. And oh, I actually don't want that anymore. And it's like she never experienced what it was actually like to try yeah. to be around this person in an empathetic way. And then right, she yeah. moved on before she was even done. So she's feeling like, oh, well, I've claimed him. You know what I mean? Like yeah. his actual closure, it's like, I don't know. At this point, I'm married with a baby. But if any <laughs> one of my best friends started dating an ex-girlfriend, I would not care. Of course all. not. And and that's the emotionally true response. Obviously, when you're 20 and 24, it's like, different. It, it, it is a little more uh, raw and close to the vest. But like, I just don't think that you can lay claim on someone. And like, she's like, you're associated with him by proxy. Like, he's not this bad guy, right? Yeah. Are you, no. and are you still seeing him? I guess is the other question. Yeah. So, you know, that was back in like beginning of spring, end of winter. So we're still dating and things are going really great, you know. Um, but obviously, like, I just didn't answer her text because I was like, yeah, I was like mad. And I was like, there's so many things I could say, like exactly what you guys are saying. You'd yeah, be like, right. your points don't make sense. But like, it just didn't feel worth it. You know, well, no, so it's, I not, didn't it's not worth arguing somebody into a position they clearly won't hold. It's you also know? like how like, good of a friend is she? like how it seems like she's not. You know, it's like, I don't want to be friends. It's like, okay. Okay. Like, sorry. Not, I can't like, fight for it this. It is really sad yeah. when, when, when people end friendships for like trivial reasons uh, yeah, right. or even at all. Like, by the way, she's <laughs> going to be thanking you when that album goes triple platinum. <laughs> Cause I fucking think that she is a talented. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. That's the weird thing about this is that the song we heard was good. And if she's a good songwriter, it seemed yeah. like, like, yes, it's not totally fair to you. Don't get, don't get us wrong. But that song is no, good. you shouldn't be friends. With this person. I think you yeah. should get residuals. Honestly, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Great point. The, the emotion, right? The truth oh of songs God. is not based in reality, though. So, like, yeah. if she wants to live in this feeling, like, if she wants to come back and be friends with you again, she might reach out. But you don't have to. Like, do you miss her? Do you feel bad about how it all went down? Because I do not think you did anything wrong. No. No. And, like, that's how I know I made the right decision is, like, I don't miss her. Like, any emotions I have yeah. is just anger. And that's because we were a part of, like, a greater friend group. Uh, and I've really been trying to take the mature position and, like, not really talk about it with anybody. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, really be respectful towards her. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling she's not doing the same towards me and my <laughs> new boyfriend. Like, dear, dear, no, she's not. She's yeah, not. no, she's being messy. She's being wild. And so I've, I've lost some friends in the mm -hmm. process. Those people exist. But they just, I feel like they run out of steam so fast. 100%. And oh, those the truth people comes are going to come back around. By the way, uh -huh. the truth comes out like that girl talking right. that shit about you, mm -hmm. like the friends that, it's sort of the thing of you don't want to go viral for yeah. drama. Exactly. Because if you do, the yeah. people that are c hanging out with you mm -hmm. then are just like in it for the drama. Yeah. It's kind of like hanging out with your drug dealer. <laughs> like, People are hanging out with you because you got the drugs, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's it's, right. It's not because you rock, even though you might. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I think that, yeah, if if you're somebody out there who's like talking, yeah. and by the way, I love to shit talk. Don't get me wrong. Oh, it's I, so fun. I'm not right. above shit talking, but I think that there's an element of it that it can't, you really have to check sometimes if something is, if you're talking shit about people who deserve it or you're just yeah. talking shit because talking shit is fun. Yeah, exactly. And, but I also think like yeah. there's a way to harmlessly talk shit and like not make people lose friendships, you know? Like I think that there's lots of degrees of having yeah. fun with it and she's clearly of the mind that like that was my two week ex which means you violated the girl code and like you're 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 in the wrong and i get that perspective but it's stupid as fuck you have to by the way empathize with your villains i think that that's a good way yes. when, when you are talking in the art of talking shit yes. yeah it's important to empathize with your villains so if you're like yeah this person did this and did this and it was like fucking so weird but i guess they're probably coming from this right. place no, and okay. they're probably, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that that actually is an important element of talk sh talking shit because then you're you're trying to get into their head because we're all fucking just people at the end of the mm -hmm. day trying yeah. to figure it yeah. out. Yeah. Putting our pants on one leg at a time. Uh, okay. Not me. Here is the no, perfect... I like that. You, you jump into it. I jump right in. <laughs> perfect person, rules of talking shit. Number one. 
your Emp- empathize with your villains. <laughs> empathize with your villains. You always have to be like, if it's a, if it's like a mutual friend, you always have to be like, no, I love this person. Like I really, I like she's really cool. That's the preface. And yeah. then at the end, you say. But also, like, I guess, like, this is probably what's going on. Like, da, da, da. they're probably coming at it from this angle and they maybe are like representing it. I mean, it's all fucking insecurity anyway. Like when yeah. people are acting out, it's usually because of some sort of feeling they're feeling in themselves. So yeah. it's like, yeah. Number two, yeah. you can always talk shit about people who have higher power than you. If the boss, oh, if it's parents. Baby. Buddy, talk Couldn't shit about your more. boss. Talk shit about the fucking people who are the leaders in the friend group. <laughs> <laughs> teachers teachers okay. absolutely yeah Parents. anybody who's in a power position is fair to talk shit about really with no consequences and you don't have to be that empathetic um no. the, the, although i will say like i just i feel like if you want it i don't know it may not be worth it you may just need to let those friendships go but like i guarantee you if you reach out one-on-one and like had coffee with the girls that you are like you know you do yeah. miss you could explain your side of it i think they would agree with you i do think we have to just prep for this co- or for the coffee or call or whatever because I feel like her side of the story that she's telling everybody is you started dating she was like oh wait what do we did you give did you give a fake name no your name's gonna be Daniela 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 started dating my ex like a week after we broke up yeah, which that's like gonna is be the damning yeah. it's damning right and they're like they're like she didn't wait at all but it doesn't sound like that's necessarily the case it also he, sounds like you asked yeah, you were you, like can I do this and yeah. she was like yeah try to correct the narrative and just be like look I told you but this is also a person that like they may just talk shit I would say safeguard the friends that you're losing yeah. more so than against this person yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this person's too emotionally volatile that they're not going to be able to hear really reason maybe try to like patch up a te- yeah. like you didn't text this person back at all so like Maybe try to find a resolution to that, even if you're both at odds. Yeah, you don't have to meet with her, but you could send her a, 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 text. a delayed text. Hey, I'm that really says, sorry that you feel this way. Uh, I asked, and that's you why said I it asked. was okay. Yeah. And yeah. like, I didn't think you liked him at all. Like, I don't understand the right. anger here, and I. But I'm sorry if I upset you, and I. I feel like I've lost some other friends because of it, and it doesn't really feel that fair to me. You know, I think that I think you're right. Like, I think that it's important to, even if it's just to maintain those other relationships, like talk that out with them and and try to make that work because it's it's hard losing so many people at once you know what i mean for yeah, totally. something that just doesn't feel worth it yeah yeah again like i guarantee you she's dating someone else and she's going to use this as fuel for a song and that's fine you talking but- to me willis <laughs> i just um, can't, can't wait for the new album to drop uh i'll definitely be keeping an eye on it <laughs> um but uh i'm yeah i'm sure yeah, I know. It's really going to be a banger. And I think that she has a big music career ahead of her. And I'm, <laughs> I'm really sorry that that's true. But thank you for calling in. I do appreciate it. And uh, I wish you the best. Ciao. All yeah. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank ciao. You. Bye. Uh, ciao. Let's just get a little another taste. Yeah. Back the home because you did it too. And there's only so much to forgive when I hate you for <gasps> I'll keep to myself I'll go to her house Why don't you go to hell There's nothing to save here When you're too far gone For hell She is not okay I fucking can't believe How hard that hits It's really good (laughs) This could be your big break I'm gonna be a representative (laughs) I'm gonna be an agent You're looking to get into music management I'm looking to be a music manager (laughs) The song is really good. It fucking is super good, by it's the way. It's really good. Her voice is extraordinary. Um, okay, here we go. Another voicemail. Hello, Miles. I'm just calling because, well, I'm wondering, is it ethical to not tell my roommates that our apartment is haunted? <laughs> um, yeah, that's my conundrum. Okay, thanks. Bye. I mean, off the bat, before we even hear more, what do you think? I'm thinking that it is a fine. I think it's fine. You don't have to tell him. It depends on what type of honey. Those are real. If she's like, I woke up in the middle of the night Whoa. and a man was dragging me down the stairs. No, no, no. That's not haunting. That's a haunting. No. A, if it's a really bad haunting, she's like, I opened the faucet and it was blood that came out. Yeah. That's just, I mean, it depends on the haunting. If it's a ghoul, fine. If it's a specter, <laughs> fine. If it's a demon, you're going to need to call the fucking ghost. What about a poltergeist throwing shit around? It depends. Is it a nice poltergeist? <laughs> <laughs>
Hello? Ooh! I heard that your apartment was haunted, and I'm here with the Chow sisters. Yeah. Chow! Hello! <laughs> oh my we word, beefed sorry. It. We beefed it. We're really, sorry. Really, really pretty actually, good. Um, I'm sort of in the bath right now. You're in the bath. Oh, Perfect time to uh, talk. Yes. It's the Chow. <laughs> we're the Chow Busters, and we're here to, to ask you about how your apartment is haunted and whether it's ethical or not for you to tell your roommates. Go ahead. Yes. So. I, I can really hear the echo. I, I, was, I, was the the right echo I, I can hear the bathroom. Yeah, sorry, okay. Just the bathroom behind you. No, don't, don't change. Don't change. No, 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 stay, in the bath, stay in the bath. Stay in the bath. <laughs> Let's see. I was just like chilling in my apartment, cleaning things up, getting it ready because it was dirty when we got there. Yeah. Um, at that apartment right now, I'm at home with my family recovering from a concussion, Aww. which could play into the ghost thing. I don't know. Oh my. But I was um, cleaning up and it was getting really late and I felt somebody poke me like <gasps> really hard in the back, <gasps> like in my kidney, like really hard. Yeah. I sort of freaked out. I sort of threatened the ghost with my Dollar Tree exacto knife. Smart. Um, I think that was good. good yeah. Enough. And I thought that was, I thought we were good. I thought, like I'd set a boundary, but <laughs> I don't By the know. way, ghosts typically, I mean, classically just <laughs> adhering to boundaries. Ghosts really respect boundaries. Yeah. Because ghosts are going to therapy. In, That's in right. 2023? Five minutes later, I just started feeling just dread and I got poked again, but way harder. And oh so God. I left and like, as soon as I was out the front door, guys, it was just, it was fine. But it was like after I had like crossed the threshold. Um, wow. so like, so when did I you move into this place? Called my cousin, he took care of it the next day. And so I went back and it's just like good ghosts now. Wait, hang on. Like, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, what did your cousin take care of? Yeah, got, did he like do a paranormal ritual? <laughs> did he do it like a little seance? Burn some sage? Um, sort of. Well, we're religious. So he like said a prayer and he exercised. Honestly, the like the vibes are so much better. He wow. five checked the um, ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is huge, by the way. A fucking ghost vibe yeah. check. Well, I think it was just like I set a boundary my way, but I think I had to set the boundary the ghost way. Yeah, you got to talk to talk his language. Yeah, he was being toxic, and you're yeah. like, literally, I am creating a boundary <laughs> between our relationship. <laughs> you need to not be so toxic exactly. in my house. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yes, I need space, and I need my like my personal bubble not to be popped by your literally bruising little pokes. Pop that gussy. Yeah. Um, Did you bruise? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't great. <laughs> Interesting. I've heard of things like this happen where it's sort of like the. Hey, the ghost hand, or the and it'll be kind of like on your leg, or from the movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like I've like seen little ghosties before, but I've never been like poked or anything. So I'm not liking this new development. Well, so what I think <laughs> was happening is that this ghost was just trying to say hi to you on Facebook. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. <laughs> so, and he just didn't know oh, how yeah. hard he didn't know his yeah. own power. Yeah, yeah he he's was, logged into Facebook. Yeah, clicking poke on your profile. Yeah, literally, you got poked <laughs> by a toxic <laughs> poked by a toxic ghost. Um, exactly. So, got it. So now you're wondering whether it's ethical or not to tell your roommates whether that this happened. Yes, because like the rude ghost is gone. Either that, or it's majorly chilled out. But I did have that experience in our shared living space. So I don't know yeah. whether or not I should tell them, warn them, or if that's like just going to introduce more bad vibes. I'm thinking which that I don't want. if you have a situation where you're being poked by a toxic ghost and fleeing your home <laughs> until the vibe checker comes by, you're going to need to be telling the yeah. little roommates what's going on. I think you should tell them. It's it's fun. It's funny. Like you said, the, the bad ghost is gone. The good ghost is back. And like, yeah. you know, a lot of people, me included, don't think ghosts are real sure. and will be skeptical of the story. I don't know what your roommates are like but yeah, we well, can come hang out uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've they've already signed the lease right yes did the ghost yeah. sign the lease <laughs> there's a fourth name <laughs> the ghost is, is not paying rent 
guys. Uh, and I think sucks. I should charge. The but. ghost is living rent free in your home. My ghost roommate refuses <laughs> yeah. to pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you got to tell the roomies because first of all, I mean, like this is just good fodder for conversation. It's good fodder for convo, and also that way, like I don't true. know, you just let everybody in on the poking situation, and maybe the ghost is trying to warn you about some bigger <gasps> ghost that's going to come on by. You know what I mean? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Maybe he farted. We do so it's like a little house and there are people living in the basement. Maybe the ghost <gasps> is trying to warn us about that people living in the basement. Scary. It's parasite. Absolutely. Very spooky. Very parasite. Well, yeah, definitely tell your roommates Ooh. because there's no downside. They're not going to be like, <laughs> I'm going to move if, because of the ghost. <laughs> Unless they're like really seriously scared of ghosts. Those people exist. I think they're silly, but they're out there. Like, pe- yeah. If, as, if, but I would guess your roommates yeah. are going to be like at least somewhat skeptical of the idea, but they will enjoy thinking about a ghost maybe being there. Also, yeah. if it's solved, problem okay, solved. Yeah. We had a problem in the past and now it's over. Yeah, you busted. You busted the ghost. <laughs> yeah, you oh, got your great. cousin to come ghost by and pray busted. the ghost away. Pray and, the ghost and away. And that's beautiful. <laughs> and that is beautiful. Well, thank you for calling in. I think that you're going to be you. Wait, can set. I get, sorry, can I get a like a little anonymous name? <gasps> oh my gosh, absolutely. Here it comes, hot and fresh. Oh, um, um, it's my turn. It's Randy turn. Fine. Ringot. <gasps> you mean the- <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that you're referencing the famously anti-Semitic uh, bankers oh, from, no. uh, from, yeah, from Harry Potter. I just want to, I don't know to point that out. Rainy is canceled. You talking to me, Willis? That's you, you right. T- you talk. You talking to me, Willis? I would love that to be in a rap song. We got to put it in a rap song. Well, gang, we're sort of nearing and dearing the end of the epi. Yeah, sad. And um, I do like how the fake name, it's like a party favor. At this point, yeah, people, people are- People like, really are like craving it. People are craving it. People are wanting it. They're collecting it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, we're about to get into our final segment. A segment that we really like to call. Lally. Get real. This is a segment where we force a genuine moment in an effort to learn more about each other and ourselves. Will. <laughs> now, while you were on your vacation. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you. He, he definitely knows where this is going. Learn anything about your life. Sometimes I find that travel. And make you look at your life slightly differently. Did you glean any hot pieces of wisdom? Yeah, in I, France, I I feel like uh, one of the first of all, it's just really nice to be away from work for that long totally. because so much of our lives revolves around doing the thing that gets you cash, and um, <laughs> and like I felt like. It was also like not smoking weed for three weeks was really good for me. And yeah, sure. oh. um, I felt I, I've come back with a renewed sense of optimism and purpose. And I feel like everything that I want to do, I can do, which I was not necessarily feeling before. And I feel I also just went to a bachelor party this weekend. Uh, literally, uh, I came back last night mm-hmm. and I saw a bunch of my wonderful friends who I love. And I just feel like I have so much love in my life. I, I just, I feel I'm in a good place right now. And I, I do think that it, as bougie as it is to say, like vacation really helped with that. And I, I, I don't necessarily know that I gained any crazy insight into me as a person, but I just started that feeling like, like, you did, though. like, yeah. like I can do it. I can yeah. do the things that I want to do. It's not oh. hopeless. Yeah. How was um, stopping smoking weed? Was it like hard at first? Oh, not at all. This is the thing. Like, I don't, I don't do it compulsively unless it's around me because I just really enjoy it. I enjoy it too much. Probably like when you are in your yeah, so you break the habit. One hundred percent. Night. It's like, oh, what did I do last week? What did I do the week before? This is going to be the thing I'm going to do today. Exactly. And so I'm trying to make it more of a deliberate choice um, to make it not something I just do when I get home from work immediately, like to try to prioritize some other things first. But I can still smoke weed sometimes. And uh, so yeah, I will say the one major feature of it, as Earl Sweatshirt says in his song, uh, "Stop Smoking Pot in My Dreams." Got my nightmares got more crazy because I stopped smoking. But I started dreaming way more. Whoa! Because when I'm when I smoke weed every day, I don't really remember my dreams, but I would have these crazy ones. Yeah. None of which I really remember, but like it was almost a novel experience. Oh my so, gosh. That's so interesting. Yeah. That was my primary takeaway from not smoking weed. Do you dream a lot? <sighs> no. 
Uh, <laughs> I actually, um, I seldom remember my dreams. Yeah. Which is really mm. sort of like uh, frustrating. Sarah dreams so intensely <gasps> all every night. She's like, uh, she's described it in ways yeah. she's been like, it's like I live a whole other life yeah. and then I wake up and she's like exhausted sometimes. Uh, yeah, I can't believe I go back to sleep sometimes because sometimes really? it's like so visceral and intense. And then at night I'm like, all right, time to, let's do it again. Do you think, I mean, dreams are really fucking crazy. I mean, this is really like, uh, what I love about the Get Real segment is <laughs> it's sort of our time to do stoner talk. Yes. But I, dreams are so fucking crazy to me because sometimes, I don't know, it'll pull like old memories and you'll oh, be like yeah. this weird, like yes. you'll wake up and you'll be like, oh, just like that feeling. Often I have disaster dreams are the ones I remember oh. where it'll be like, I remember I had one dream and I was like on a boat and I had crashed it and everyone's going to be pissed at me and I was going to be in trouble. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I don't have to be in trouble. In I guns. had a dream last night that Justin Bieber was in love with me, but he was upset because it was ruining his life because Haley Bieber was really upset, but he was so in love with me, but he was toxic. So I was like, um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. And I had a boyfriend. <laughs> But Justin Bieber was like trying to so I was to get like, I you. don't care. He like, was so in love with you. He, it was ruining <laughs> <laughs> Rainy, I'm supposed to go to the Grammys. I, I simply can't. Haley is upset. And I was just like, he was like, can you actually just like give me a break? Because like, I just like got with you. It was toxic. <laughs> it sounds like you were cheating on your boyfriend too. <laughs> yeah. Also, by the way, how did you feel about in the gym? Were you like, whatever, Justin? I know. How was I feeling? <laughs> It's hard to know. <laughs> I don't know. I think I was like, I guess I do remember being like, I guess we're in an open relationship. Me and my boyfriend, because we were like making out like in front of him. <laughs> well, dreams don't have to make complete sense. Yeah. It's like you fill in the gaps, right? Yeah. Like yeah. if there's something like that where it's like, I have a boyfriend, but I'm hooking up with Justin Bieber. I, like, yeah, you were in an open relationship. Sure. Like you just add something. Like yeah. Yeah. your dreams are your subconscious. Sometimes it's so obvious. Like you ever have a dream where it's just about something you've been anxious about for the last couple of weeks and yeah. it's like that thing going wrong and it's like, here's my subconscious real subtle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Dream That's, talk. Uh, it's always something that I'm insecure about because it's like, is this boring? Well, I think it is. <laughs> no, I mean, it's something everybody fucking does. Yeah. It's also like, I mean, you know, Will was talking about not believing in ghosts. It's like our dreams in some way, like we are you fucking portal to another fucking... No, they're just your subconscious flashing through people you saw that day. Uh, you say that as it, by the way, you said it's just your subconscious <laughs> flashing other people. Like when you're that's in crazy. a dream trying to, that's what's interesting to me. I understand the rationalization outside the dream, but when you're in a dream and you're like, I am an NPC in a video game yeah. and yeah. it is live. It like I get it in theory that it's like, yeah, it's your brain creating fucking chemicals. But when you're in a dream, yeah. nothing fucking compares hey, man, to that. Hey man, when your brain creates chemicals, it's real, baby. Hey, you you're, tell you're telling me, man. That's just life. <laughs> the greatest chemical of all, love. Serotonin. Oh. <laughs> Well, thanks for doing the show, Rainy and Will. It's obviously the Wrecking Ball crew. Ciao! Ciao! I was not ready. Wait. Okay. Also, before we end, I have to give my formal apology for saying Gringotts. Okay. By you, the way, Rainy's canceled. It's fine. It's fine. Gringotts. First of all, you said Gringot. Uh, so you could have just been referencing something. Funny Let's name. do that. Let's do that. No, Funny no. name. Uh, Funny name. And now right. I'm ready. Ciao! Oh, Bella. As always, you can follow. Rainy started to stand up, by the way. She thought we were <laughs> she totally thought we were done. done. I was like, All right. Rainy, we got to plug the social. Oh, right, right, Rainy right, right, is in her. Plug. You are an influencer. Rainy God is damn an it. influencer now. Yes. Give it a follow. By the way, I saw 17K. Oh, on Instagram? Yeah. Yes, honey. <laughs> I would like 17. to just say that I only have 8,000 followers and I'd really like to get up to the double digits. Yeah. But I, I don't really can... post or am interesting. I do obviously have a big post coming up September 1. September uh, 1. No, September 5. Excuse me. And a couple Easter um, eggs here and there. Well, yeah. after this, first of all, follow my TikTok because Will is in a few and you're going to be in one coming up, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't recorded yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, I, I'll, I'll put you in my story today. You don't have to. You can. No, Rain, I will. Rain, you should, well, you have to pay Rainy for it. <laughs> okay, sure. I really should be doing that, by the way. That's <laughs> <laughs> Just for Will. Follow Rainy at Raining Toll. It's Raining Toll. <laughs> at it's Raining Toll. I'm at W Whitwer, W I T W E R. I have to spell it at the bank. <laughs> I loved that. <laughs> I really so like that, actually. <laughs> and you can follow me at Miles Bond if you don't already. And thank you so much for listening to the show. I appreciate being a part of your week. 
And as always, if you have a conundrum and you're not sure where to go or where to solve it, if you're not sure what to do or how to do it, if you're wondering, hmm, yeah, well, it's been a crazy <laughs> wild ride. You just need to close your eyes and know that perfection is only a call away. You take all the blame for the walls that she's built. I hope you stop reaching out. Oh, I know that you will. She's the carpenter. Tried to fix you. She only wrecked the home because you dared her to. And there's only so much to forgive when I hate you for That was a HeadGum Podcast.